Hi, good morning. You join me in the garage once more. Uh, today, what I want to do is do a little bit better of a rack system for the uh, boxes I have here. These I use, uh, very, very useful. Keep all your bits and pieces all together. Crimps in one, bearings in another perhaps. But the problem I've been faced with for years is if I want to get this particular unit out there, three others want to come with it, which isn't really practical. It means I've got to remove these three to get to this one. And I'll put these three back on the shelf. This one will go on the top, that's fine. But a little bit later, I'm going to want to get the one that's on the bottom again. So the plan I've got today is to put a little system here that will lift that up a fraction, which will make it independent of itself. Uh, so I can quite aptly remove the bottom box without it, uh, affecting the ones on the top. So cut a long story short, I'm going to get all that off there. We'll have a little measure up of uh, how many I can get in there and how many rails I need for uh, for the boxes. So yeah, that's what we're going to do now. Right, okay, I've had a little measure up. What I'm going to do is move this shelf just above these two big boxes. I only have two of these, so th that'll be fine. Um, then I should have enough room to get eight boxes here, another eight up the side here. Uh, I need to move that up a little bit and I'll probably end up making a little bit of a system for these because I get the same problem. I want this box, these two are in the way. So um, yeah, looking to mount 16 of these in there. I think I've only got 12 at the minute, but there's room for expansion. Uh, the side rails, I'm going to use a bit of channeling like that, a bit of angle. Um, I need to make 28 of those up. I've got some aluminium, I've got some old steel you'll see in a minute I'm going to cut up. But the idea is that'll sit on the side there, screw to the side of the cupboard, and then this will just simply rest on the top. And there'll be another one, and another one, and another one, and so on. But because of the recess here, you've got a little bit of beading at the edge of the cupboard either side. Uh, this isn't really long enough to support the box. So what I'm going to end up doing is just packing this side out with MDF. But uh, I've got some of that. That's just a couple of little cuts I need to do. So, um, yeah, I'll move the shelf. And uh, I'll show you cutting these up. I have 28 of these to go. Um, and a couple of bits of MDF and we should be done. Okay, this is the metal I've got on hand. Uh, so this is what I'm going to be using for the shelf brackets. You're going to end up with strips like this. 30 centimeters long um, not really going to use these because this is from an old greenhouse basically um, so these are cut for the greenhouse so I can't really use that there's a couple inches there that's a bit how you're doing um, but this aluminium angle here is going to be fine <clears throat> the only problem is I can only get eight out of that piece eight out of there that makes 16 I need 32 altogether this is uh, another piece of channeling from the said greenhouse that's never got used. Um, so the plan is I'm going to cut it down the middle here. That'll reveal two angle pieces. Uh, and out of each of those, I'm going to get six. So here, in all, I'm going to get over 32 pieces. So um, the plan is cut this lengthways first. I did on an R about, shall I cut it into 30 centimeter lengths and cut it lengthways? But I think the simplest is do one complete cut on here, likewise on this piece. So I'll end up with four pieces of angle, then I can cut it 30 centimeters in one go. Uh, well, certainly each piece at a time. Um, then I haven't got to come back and cut, cut it down the middle. So that's the plan. I'm going to set up now, slit these two down the middle, then get it on the chop saw and uh, end up with 30 centimeter pieces I need for the racking. So yeah, this is what we're going to do now. Okay, we're all set up, ready to cut, so that's just what I'm going to do.
That's number one on to number two. Right, there's the angle cut. I'm going to use one of these, deburring tool. Uh, you simply run it down the edge of the metal. Like so. And you end up with a fairly safe edge there, fairly safe finish. A little bit I've missed there. It's a bit difficult to do this and keep in shot. Uh, but yeah, they're really good if you're cutting holes in metal. All you got to do is whip around the hole when you're done. And uh, yeah, it's, it's clean as a whistle. If you try to use a file, yeah, you can do it with a file. But yeah, try one of them. You'll, you, you'll be impressed. Um, also on like flat steel plates, it'll take the, uh, the edges off. Uh, it doesn't really form a big radius, but it, uh, you know, it tidies it up. But this cut edge is a bit how you're doing, but that'll go against the cupboard. The finished edge, which is uh, machine finished, uh, and this nicely painted that's where the racking will rest on so I'm going to carry on deburring this then I'm going to set it all up in the uh, Evolution chop saw and chop the 30 centimeter lengths out of it. So uh, you'll see that in a moment Okay, I'm gonna cut these pieces now. I'll cut them the evolution way uh, I had some problems with the saw it, or the length of the life of the saw blades in the past and uh, Evolution told me to cut it this way, so we'll try it this way and see if I feel it's safe uh, to continue. If not, I'm going to turn the metal around, but here we go. Well, that's all of the aluminium I had. I uh, wish I had more of that. I've got to go over to the steel we saw we cut earlier. But yeah, Evolution, uh, I got in touch saying I'd get about eight cuts out of the blade. Um, and that's a blade done. And £20 blade, it, it was uh, quite pricey per cut. But they told me I should mount the metal this way and cut into it. You can't clamp it that way. I'd rather it that way and clamp it down. But they tell me I'll get a longer life out of it this way. Um, there's, I'll put a link in the, in the video at the end so go and have a look in the comments and there'll be a link to the evolution site that they sent me to to tell me how I should cut round stock, square stock etc even flat plate so um, yeah I'm going to just carry on with the steel now uh, same principle uh, just <laughs> uh, one or two more cuts shall we say Right, a nice clean cut you do get from the evolution saw, I must say. Uh, I was doubling up the cut, the cut so uh, as long as I did more than 16 cuts there, I don't know if you were counting, I wasn't. Um, I should have enough to do that little project, uh, plus with some left over, I believe. So I'm going to go deburr these and I'll get the MDF on the on the circular saw bench and uh, see if we can cut the... the well, I think I'll need four pieces, uh, four pieces of wood up for that, so we'll see that in a second. Okay, that's the fence set on the circular saw to 30 centimetres wide is what I want. The wood's over 500 long, which is great. Again, that's what I need, so I'll just go ahead and uh, we'll cut a couple of slices out of it.
only got three out of that piece of board. I need four pieces, so back to uh, the stock, and I'll bring that over and chop that up. Okay, you can see the four boards all taped together here. They're the ones that can act as spaces within the cupboard uh, just to pull the rails in that little bit closer together. Uh, so I need that extra depth to hold the uh, boxes I'm going to be putting in there. I've taped them all together and drilled them all in one go. Um, so as just to speed the process up, really. Oh, I didn't video that. I guess you've seen enough holes drilled already today. So I'm going in for a brew now. Um, after I've had that, I'm come back out. We put this wood in the cupboard and mark the cupboard and drill holes in that. Uh, then we can go about putting the rails in and uh, put it all back together. So yeah, let's put the kettle on. Okay, right back from the cup of tea. <coughs> I put this spacer panel on the side here. I've already done a few holes. These smaller holes are the ones I already marked earlier. Um, so if you wish, you can just watch me drill a few more here. Um, then I'll take this off in larger holes on the back um, and repeat the process for the right hand side here and also the center panel. You might remember this is going to go in here, something like that and again there'll be a piece of wood either side here um, for the rails so there should be four lots of rails when you come back to me. So we'll drill a few holes and uh, crack on with the project. Okay, I'm using these step drills. I've mentioned these before. I'll, I'll link it into a video uh, that I went into a little bit more detail, but really, really good, these step drills. It saves you faffing about swapping, changing different size drills. So, yeah, uh, have a look at the link if you wish. Here we go. Okay, um, yeah, pretty one. Pretty much every one of them's marked or drilled through, so I'll just enlarge those to suit the bolts I'm going to use. Crack on with the other side, and we'll come back when uh, the rails are on. Okay, time to drill the rails. There's over 32 of them, each with a hole in them, so a lot of holes to drill. What I've done is set up some backstops on the drill press, so I can just slide the plate in like that hold it, knock the hole in it, turn the plate round, same again, and carry on through the process. It should speed things up. I haven't got to measure each individual rail. So that's what we'll do. Count if you wish, but uh, here, we, here we go. Number one. Uh, they're going to be in the same place every time on every one of those rails. These are holes already in the metal. It doesn't matter about that. I've avoided those holes and also holes in the in the racking system. So right, 31 plus more to go. Radio, there's the 32 rails fitted to the cupboard. They've all been deburred and bolted on ready to accept the plastic boxes. So um, I've got a few of the rails left over. They're going to be, um, I'm going to use them above the racking you can see here um, for the smaller boxes I have. Uh, so they'll come in useful. So I'll bang all the boxes back in and you can see what it's like in a moment. Right, that's all back together now. Um, this is riveted to the top and bottom shelf and at the back, uh, the, the, the middle frame here. Uh, capped it off with a little grommet, stop you cutting your hands. I've got space for, well I've got one empty box in here. Just space for three more. So um, yeah, that's tidied it up and the bottom box currently, I can take that out with all the others coming with it. And that was the whole aim of the project in the first place. So yeah, you can take out any one you like, you can easily see it. Um, you take it to the desk. 
I could have put runners on here so the box would just come out but that's a lot more money a lot more time and the really in my opinion no need for it um, I usually take that out drop it on the desk anyhow so that's that's fine by me so yeah we've got room for up to 16 um, storage containers two big ones on the bottom and all the rest of the gear here is all stowed quite safely and easily accessible and that's the key thing for me I, I want to be able to get to it now I don't want to have to trample through six or seven other boxes to get to it so yeah that's the project um, if you felt it useful um, or interesting be very happy to get a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you would because there'll be more more um, videos like this coming your way soon thanks for watching